Hello to everyone. Let's have a look at another amazing game from TSEC Season 18 Super Final Round 3. Leela playing White Hair. The opening book given is actually in the King's Indian territory. So this is one of my favourite systems with the black pieces. A favourite of Gary Kasparov, Bobby Fischer. So Bishop G7 here. The modern trend is usually to play the Grunfeld as a preference at Super Grandmaster level. So we have here white occupying the center, d6, knight f3, black castles, bishop e2, e5, bishop e3, a very solid system here. I believe Vladimir Kramnik uses this quite a bit as well. We see knight c6, d5, 97, and this is the end of the book given. Here, Leela chooses knight d2. We have knight e8, and now queen b3. This is off the beaten path of human games actually usually c5 here is played immediately there does seem to be an invitation by black to play c5 for example in the game Ivanchuk against boss in frankfurt 2000 Ivanchuk played c5 and had a very good game here uh, here he went on to win in 30 moves i'll just quickly show you that so white got a formidable queenside pressure and you can see that uh Image looks very creative with his king placement, leaving in the center there for a bit. And here, uh, getting a very, very good queenside pressure, winning that and black resigned there. So there's very good game examples with the immediate c5 here. So why didn't Leela do that? It's intriguing. f5 from Stockfish, we have f3. Uh, now c5 from black. So is there something to be concerned here that black's just blocked this up or perhaps this structure is just seen as a fixed kind of tactical target for, for white because later you can imagine things like queen a3 and b4 in fact uh Lila tries to close the king side up so g4 we have bishop f6 g5 so that king side's getting closed up h4 sealed knight g7 we have a4 Knight h5, a5, and this is starting to make things difficult. If black ever wanted to play b6 against a structural attack against this structure, you can imagine b4 coming up and black might want to play b6. We have knight f4, and the bishop just drops back here. So that knight on f4, it has got aggressive squares, but they seem to be parried by this bishop right now. We have bishop g7. Uh, it's interesting to consider if black tries to exchange on e4 this position would there be any, be any mileage here it seems actually my initial analysis didn't reveal too much uh with stockfish if a6 it seems as though this is not really going to do white too many favors uh minimal advantage the way to play it it seems uh in this continuation with bishop g4 is just to play rook g1 and here if the bishop's dropping back, then taking there is actually a plausible idea. It actually comes back to this idea that this structure is a, a kind of tactical target here. And we see that demonstrated in this variation with knight b5, where actually there's a big threat of, yes, I wonder if you can spot it. What does white play here? It seems the queen's in Siberia, but this is a, a kind of vulnerable structure. Okay. Knight takes d6 becomes plausible. This is just a very strong position for white, this, this sack, leaving connected past pawns. So, yeah, there is something about this structure here. And if instead um, of bishop c8, um, yeah, if we go, I mean, rather with bishop c8 instead, let's have a look at that instead in this line, then queen a3 targeting this structure it is a fascinating a fascinating treatment of the position knight b5 and if black doesn't give up the dark square bishop again a sacrifice like this is very strong for white if black gives up sorry the light square bishop though if we go back here uh, then there's going to be big trouble strategically on the light squares later on uh, so if bishop takes b5 we can see that white can potentially dominate these light squares with this light square bishop. For example, and uh, this is just a fictitious line where white kind of 
it even plays bishop takes f4 and can eventually get a strong attack like that. If black played e takes f4 here, then you can we can see the domination on the light squares is going to be really unpleasant for black. So yeah, it it is a fascinating uh, situation. So bishop g7, uh, Stockfish didn't indulge f takes e4, keeping this tension here in the center for the moment. But we have Leela targeting this, yeah, as a dynamic, as a sort of kind of dynamic tactical target. Bishop d7, knight b5 here, knight c8. So Stockfish is maneuvering around to protect this pawn chain. But now b4. So all this with the king on e1. We have f takes e4. If c takes b4, then just to demonstrate this, there's a lot of pressure here building up. And if black has to give up the light square bishop, white well, can do this kind of thing and be really great on the light squares later. So um, yeah, we have uh, f takes e4 after b4. f takes, c takes here, queen takes, bishop g4 now. So that means that the queen's protecting uh, d6. That's one of the effects, important effects of this move. Rook g1, h5, knight c3. We have rook b8. And now rook g3. This suppresses some square use like h3 from black. Uh, rook f7, rook b1, queen d7. And now a6 is played. This is a fascinating moment in the game where queen d8 is played, offering the possibility of two rooks for a queen in balance. The queen is also looking to pounce at a5 after. So is this dangerous because there's a kind of crisscross here against the king almost sometimes? Before we venture into um, this queen d8, a takes, if uh, black had refused and not played queen d8 here with b6, this is interesting. There's a light square long term argument after queen a4 that white is going to be better. And this move, you know, knight f3, it didn't really trigger why this is important, but with knight h2, it becomes seen it, it is important to take out the light square bishop and then dominate the light squares. So it's a bit of a process going on here in this variation. If we just show it as an example. So knight takes white can eventually take over the light squares. Even if the light square bishop is taken that white's going to be very, very comfortable here on the light squares and have the bigger prospects and, and prospect of winning G4 later. It's a long term example, but it's uh, it shows that yeah, there's a downhill slope positionally to the black position if black had play, played b6. But in, in the game continuation, it's remarkable here at move 27 how this seemingly very complex situation gets simplified so rapidly now. <laughs> we have a takes. Both rooks are offered for the queen. Yeah, queen a5. And you might think, is queen a5 totally essential? If it's not played, it's going to be stopped. If bishop f8, then knight b3 stops queen a5. And here, the white pieces actually kind of coordinate quite well. Even if some exchange is there, the rook can go to the, this rook can go to the queen side, this king side rook can go to the queen side. And the black pawns are, are going to start dropping off at some point with the knights infiltrating. It's going to be horrible stuff, for example, like this. So yeah, it seems as though, you know, queen a5 is, is the intention. But now uh, Lila plays a quiet but very, very strong move, uh, making this whole variation quite possible to avoid this kind of dangerous crisscrossing of the bishop and queen and, and the back row. I guess what Leela plays here, if I give you 10 seconds to pause the video. So what would you play with white in this position? So you have two rooks for the queen here. Okay, just rook b1 actually. There's a there's a tactical possibility here. Um if rook b8 this could lead to dangers after taking and the back row for example check here and taking here and this opens up that bishop. And things could get very very nasty if that dark square bishop comes into the equation like this. So yeah, rook b1 manages the counterplay. Queen takes and now the point is, I hope you spotted it. Bishop takes f4, so we have masses of simplification going on. 
from the earlier, earlier possession. And in fact, Stockfish just goes in with e takes f4. If queen c2, well, white is just going to be lots of pieces for the queen here after bishop e3. Not just, uh, I mean, it's it's a very, very good possession here. For example, bishop f8. The two rooks are, are more than enough. So this position, white's just better. So we, we have actually um, this e takes f4, just giving up the queen, actually. So grabbing uh, th this option. But here, uh, black is the exchange down after rook b3. Yeah, it's just masses of simplification, <laughs> simplification from an earlier complex position. We have bishop d4. And now knight f3, and now more simplification. Bishop takes his blade, not bothering of anything else. Uh, yep. Yeah, so rook takes a5, rook takes f4, king g7, king d1, knight b6. And here there is a positional threat to at least get an active knight. You know, maybe c5 or e5. Guess what? Leela plays in this position. If I give you ten seconds to pause the video. I'll take out those arrows. White play here. Okay, c5. It actually suppresses this knight from any uh, nice outposts. It deprives <laughs> the outpost career for the knight. Uh, if king c2, then knight d7, for example. And it's technically it's good for white, but there's going to be a lot of work to do. Compared to uh, the game, it is good for white, but c5 is very interesting, depriving knight outposts at the cost of a pawn. Bishop b5 keeps the knight out of d7 now. So, very, very interesting pawn sack. Bishop d4, king c2, king g8, king b3, bishop a1, and now actually bishop e8. These pawns are really weak here. The bishop without the counterpart is really, really strong here, especially with the knight not doing anything. Bishop d4, bishop takes g6, and this one's going to fall now. Check, king a2, knight d7, bishop takes h5. So a move 46, actually, it was resigned for black. Uh, so yeah, this was the first decisive game in the match, and one that kind of baffled me how <laughs> it went from a super complex looking position. To two rooks being given for the queen, then further simplification immediately after that, just going into an exchange down end game without too much of a fight. But I think a lot of positional damage had been done if uh, the two rooks weren't given up. It seems white has huge pressure on the light squares, and if the bishop's forced on g4 as a tactical target. If that's taken off, then white has even more potential light square pressure after. So it was an interesting like tactical decision. But yeah, it didn't work out very well. It was a downhill slope, it seems, in this game. I think partly due to the opening. So the question is, will Stockfish get revenge when it plays with the white pieces? So that's the cliffhanger for this game. Keep tunes on this channel. I want to cover all the decisive games. Fairly <laughs> for both sides, no bias like last time. If you enjoyed this game, please give me a like or subscribe even with the notification bell. If you want to challenge me for a game, King's Crusher TV. If you register there, I'll be able to invite you for a game or bit.ly slash chess world. Check out these playlists as well bit.ly slash Leela Chess, bit.ly slash Stockfish Chess. And come and join me for ch chats or game recommendations at King's Crusher TV slash Discord. Okay, thanks very much.